I have created a new backdrop behind me. I don't know how I feel about it. I do like my setup better. I have a desk. I, I prefer this setup. Don't know how I feel about the backdrop. We'll see. We'll see what we do with it. We'll see where this goes. We'll see. I'm trying. I'm trying to present facts to you that are cool to me and I hope that then they're cool to you too. I don't know how backdrop goes into that. So just go with it. Hello everyone. I am Marcella. This is Get Ready and Get Weird. Thank you so much for clicking to watch this video about hydrothermal vents. Hydrothermal vents are an amazing geological phenomenon that I am thoroughly, thoroughly intrigued and fascinated by. This video will give a very brief, basic overview of hydrothermal vents. I am not a hydrothermal ventologist, geologist, or marine biologist, or oceanologist. Some of those were real, some may or may not be real scientists. But the disclaimer is, I have not studied these thoroughly. I have done at-home research because I think they're amazing. So hopefully you watching this video will give you some basic information and show you why I think they're so amazing. And if you're intrigued by them, you could do your own research about them also. I learned about them on a show on Disney Plus called One Strange Rock. And I do recommend that show if you're intrigued by the phenomena that fill this planet. I love hydrothermal vents and I can talk about how amazing I think they are for a very long time if you get me started. In this video, I try to just cover info, basic info and facts so that we don't just get caught up talking about how completely incredible hydrothermal vents are. So let's get started talking about hydrothermal vents. Hello, I'm here with my clean face. I'm ready to talk to you all about hydrothermal vents. This was a very fun topic to research and I've been intrigued by it since I heard about hydrothermal vents on a show called One Strange Rock, which is on Disney Plus. So if you have not watched that, I highly recommend it. It covers quite a few amazing things about this strange rock that we live on. So in 1977, something amazing happened. Researchers were studying the Galapagos Rift, which is a ridge where two, techno two tectonic plates meet. And while they were studying this rift, which is at the sea floor, they were coming across something strange. When you're at the sea floor, you expect the water to be super cold because there's a lack of sunlight. You expect you expect near freezing temperatures and researchers were finding, yeah, there's near freezing temperatures, but then randomly there would be a drastic shift in the temperature. It would, <laughs> Buzz, what are you doing? Hey. It would shift from near freezing to over seven, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 750 degrees Fahrenheit and higher. And researchers were totally stumped. How is this happening? How is the water going from nearly freezing, which is what you'd expect, to over 700 degrees Fahrenheit? And this is when researchers found hydrothermal vents at the sea floor. Hydrothermal vents are, bye bye, it's okay. Okay, thank you. I know hydrothermal vents are so exciting. Boop. Hydrothermal vents are like geysers or hot springs on, on land. It's where two tectonic plates meet and cold seawater, ocean water, goes into the porous parts of rocks or through the fissures in the tectonic plates and meets with magma, volcanic magma. This of course 
heats up the water, causes a ton of pressure. The water, the hot water starts to dissolve some of the minerals into it. And because of all the pressure, the heat and the minerals, the water is then forced back up through the floor of the sea and it creates hydrothermal vents. The minerals in that water then solidify as it cools and they form the little chimney looking hydrothermal vents. So they discover these hydrothermal vents, which is already surprising. They weren't expecting to see this, but also, of course, there's, ge there's geysers and volcanoes and hot springs on land. Of course, we're gonna see them in the ocean, right? So in and of itself, it's not like life-changing, but let's talk about life-changing. The researchers also found hundreds of new species. And when I think of life on earth, I think of a couple things. For life on earth, we need water. Okay, we have that in the hydrothermal vents. And the other thing that I think of when I think of life on earth is sunlight. We all need sunlight. Sunlight is the energy for life. Sunlight gives the plants energy, which then gives the animals energy. That's how life goes around, right? But at these hydrothermal vents, they found hundreds of species, but there's no sunlight down there. There's no, the sunlight just doesn't reach that deep and it's just dark and cold, but there's life. Not only is there no sunlight, these minerals that I mentioned in the water that is being emitted by these hydrothermal vents would be considered toxic to us. We would not, I mean, they wouldn't be conducive to life, as well as the extreme temperatures and tons of pressure down that deep in the ocean. So as surprising as it was, these researchers had found light deep, deep, deep down in the ocean. And these organisms were thriving. This is when researchers realized that photosynthesis was not the only way for microorganisms to create usable energy to live. Let's do a blue, a deep, deep blue look. Blues and blacks, but I always start with a light shade on my eye first as a base. Okay, so the way that these organisms were finding energy is through a system called chemosynthesis. This is very similar to what we know as photosynthesis, which is when organisms use the sunlight to and transform it into energy to be used to grow and live and survive. And then other organisms like us eat those plants, organisms that use photosynthesis, and that in turn gives us energy. And that's exactly how chemosynthesis down at the hydrothermal vents works. Small organisms are able to use the chemicals and minerals in the hydrothermal vents, in that water, the mineral rich water, to, they use those minerals and those chemicals to create energy in themselves to live and thrive and then larger organisms can eat those smaller organisms and it's a whole ecosystem going on down there. I'm telling you, we don't know anything up here with our photosynthesis talking about that's the only way to live. We don't know anything. We know something and we found these, so hey, I'll give us some credit. blue. All right, so there's a couple of different kinds of hydrothermal vents. There's three that I found in my research, three specific kinds. And the differences between these are the temperature as well as the minerals that make up the plumes that emit from them. And so the two main kinds of 
plumes or vents are black smokers and white smokers. Black smokers are made up of iron sulfide. Ooh, girl. Black smokers are made up of iron sulfide, which looks black when it comes out, and they are the hottest of the different kinds of hydrothermal vents. They are also the largest, so they can get the tallest. They can be 18 stories high, which is about 180 feet tall. That's nuts. I work downtown in Dallas, and I work on the 12th floor, and that's already so high in the sky. <laughs> I just can't even, I cannot. That's so high up. The white smokers are made up of barium, calcium, and silicon. Those have a white, they're lighter in color, and they are smaller as well as cooler than the black smokers. Oceany. And I did mention that there's three different kinds that I found. And the third one is a smaller chimney that is actually just called, they're just called seats, which is adorable if you ask me. I'm like a mermaid, should have done unicorns today. So a seep is just less pressure, they're the smallest, their um, emissions are less noticeable, but they kind of shimmer. They kind of shimmer due to the CO2 and because of the difference in temperature. So they kind of almost look like glittery little bubbles um, under the water. So maybe they're my favorite. I mean, I love a little glitter. You can't go wrong with shimmer. Ooh, just did that. We'll just call this I look a black smoker in honor of the black smoker geothermal vents. You know, I can't ever just do a non-dramatic smoky eye. If you say smoke, we're going full smoke show here on this situation. All right, we'll lighten it up just a smidgen. Maybe not lighten it up, but we'll like soften it. But let me get this fall out first. This is an example of when I probably should have done my concealer after my eyes, but I get into a process and I just can't seem to start it differently. I don't know if that makes any sense. So let's add a little more concealer up under these little pink eyes now. All right, crisis averted so far, we think, we hope. There, that looks a little softer. Okay, so we have talked about when hydrothermal vents were discovered, what they actually are, 
where they exist, why they exist. We talked about the three different kinds. And we fixed an almost catastrophe on my eyeballs. So I feel like today has been a win so far, but we're not done yet. We still have a few more things to talk about and a face to finish because this is not a look. Not quite, not, mm -mm, it's not. A little bit of blue in the inner corner. I am an oceanist. I am an ocean. And my eyeballs are hydrothermal vents. Hear me roar. didn't make it y'all with this smoke show going on but we are here to tell the tale all right so again we have covered what they are when they were discovered um what's so cool about them but let's talk about why they matter you know we could have gone forever without knowing about them but they have to be important for research for some reason, right? Right, you're right. You're correct in thinking that. So glad that you agree with me. So one thing that's important and cool about these hydrothermal vents, why they matter, what they actually do for us, is that they are a natural plumbing system for the planet. They release pressure and heat and energy from the center of the earth into the ocean. So we're able to get chemicals that we don't have here on the surface or we wouldn't have here on the surface without this sort of plumbing system. And so that's one function. They also help to regulate the planet's ocean's chemistry. So globally, it helps to balance the chemistry of the ocean. We are able to get lots of important or commercially important minerals to the surface. Again, similarly, ones that we maybe wouldn't have had on the Earth's surface without phenomena like this. Many modern day mines like copper mines or different mines like that are thought to be in places that these hydrothermal vents used to exist. So when different places were underwater, lots of these mines are believed to have been created then. I can't even tell. Do I have anything on my cheeks? Okay. I now, besides what I just mentioned as being important and why they matter, why these hydrothermal vents matter, Another, another reason why these hydrothermal vents matter is because of the biodiversity and the diverse ecosystems that they support. These ecosystems give us a whole new, literally a whole new lease on life, a whole new way to look at life on this planet. They give us clues to the possibility of how life was formed on earth, so early life could have begun deep down in these depths. They give us a whole new way to think about life on this planet. You know, we always thought that sunlight was the key, but maybe, maybe before, these organisms reached the sunlight, reached the surface of the ocean. These chemicals, these minerals, this heat, this pressure, maybe those are actually the key to life. 
I mean, I'm gonna leave it to the smarter scientists, the smarter people to tell me about this stuff, but that's what my little brain goes to. We are able to study biochemical adaptions that let other life forms have, other organisms have, and learn about them. Again, just learning about different ways that life can be sustained on this planet. And speaking of this planet, we also are able to consider and study and find different ways to look for and research life or the possibility of life in other parts of our solar system and other parts of the universe because this gives us a whole different perspective of what life needs, where life can exist. And so it kind of opens up a whole lot of, a whole lot of considerations. So that is what my research has taught me about hydrothermal vents. I hope that you learned a lot, but more than that, I hope that I sparked interest and you could maybe look into hydrothermal vents more and look into the life that they support more. If you're interested, you can check out the Disney Plus show, One Strange Rock. That's where I first heard about them. I've also heard about many other amazing things about this planet. So that show, if you have Disney Plus, highly recommend it. So thank you so much for stopping by to hang out with me. I hope you enjoyed my almost disaster of an eye makeup look. We, we did something with it. So this is my smoky hydrothermal <laughs> vent look. As always, if you enjoyed this conversation, if you learned something, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate every single like, every single subscribe, and every single share that I see. I love seeing your comments. I have a whole list of suggestions that my friends and family have mentioned that they'd like to learn about. So I'm so happy to research anything that's interesting. There is an infinite number of phenomena that we share this planet with that I am completely intrigued and enthralled by. So if you have one that's just bugging you, it's just stuck in your noggin, send it my way. I'm happy to do my makeup while we talk about it. I'm very glad that you're here. Thank you for clicking to watch. If you liked it, please like, please subscribe if you're not already and share these videos or my channel with anyone who you think is interested in this planet that we live on. <laughs> All right, with that being said, thank you and stay weird.